You ever notice there's certain reptiles you've heard about, but you never really see anybody talk about? Today, I'm gonna take some inspiration from an idol of mine, and we're gonna do the seven dirty reptiles that you never see on TV. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. Now, of course, most of you are going to understand, especially if you were old like me, older. I am old. How old are you? 16. Well, not, not young. If you are not Gen Z, you probably know who George Carlin is. This is a stupid idea, needs to be completely rethought. A major inspiration for mine, the reason I do this YouTube channel is because I'm a stand-up comedian and a guy told me to do a YouTube channel anyway. Have you heard this thing at all? Instead of the seven dirty words you can't say on TV, I'm gonna do the seven dirty reptiles you can't see on TV. So, now of course, where these reptiles aren't dirty, they're not gross, these are just animals that for some reason or another, you never really see on actual TV or now the internet. You don't really see any channels with big audiences, kind of the bigger YouTubers, talk about these reptiles. I'm gonna tell you why I think that is, and I want to just enlighten you on some really cool species you don't see enough of. Let's start off with number seven. You're down to seven. Nile monitors. Now, in terms of monitors, as the editor, Matt, who normally edits these videos, I'm editing this one myself, would say, they are the baddest of the bunch. Today, we're gonna talk about the baddest one of them all. So, thanks, Matt and Mystic Animals for donating this footage. I don't know why Matt got a Nile monitor. There are so many monitors that are better for most people. Now, Matt, of course, is an expert reptile keeper, and that's probably why. He wanted something more challenging. But the reason that you wouldn't get a Nile monitor is because you can get literally anything else and it's gonna be a better pet usually. For example, if you want a monitor, get yourself an Aki, it's small. Uh, get yourself an Asian water monitor. They can be tamed out more easily. Get a lace monitor. They're more interesting to look at, more expensive, but also can be tamed out more easily. Nile monitors are notorious for being a pain in the arse to deal with. I'm allowed to say arse because it wasn't on the seven dirty words you can't say on TV, so I'm, I'm good, I'm safe. Now the monitors get big, they are from Africa, and we're talking about like over six feet sometimes, right? These are big animals that will tail whip the crap out of you. Crap is also not on the seven dirty words, I'm allowed to say it. <laughs> so silly, this whole concept is so silly. They'll bite you and scratch you. Now I'm not saying they're impossible or bad pets objectively, I'm just saying for 99% of people who own reptiles and 90% of people who want to own monitors, these are not the best monitor for you. Number six, scrub pythons. Scrub pythons are just underrated, period. Now they're kind of expensive and they're not the easiest thing to find in the world, but they need to be. They need to be more easily found and more bred, I think. Now, of course, if you live in Australia, this is a staple, but for us in North America and Europe, this is really not a staple. I know Brian Cusco has them. Brian Cusco referred to scrub pythons as man pythons. Really, Cusco, that's how you're gonna describe them, man pythons? Either way, have you guys uh, seen a vet? Cause these pythons are sick. Oh, I wanna be a douchebag. Anyway, have you ever seen a python so freaking cool looking? This is the unofficially sixth largest snake in the world, often grouped in the top five largest snakes. Now these are from Papua New Guinea, they're from Indonesia, and the big ones are from Australia. They can get, the biggest one ever was over 18 feet. Now they're more likely gonna be eight or nine or 10 feet, something like that. But that's still a really big snake. And of course they are thinner than something like a berm. They're a little bit thinner than a reticulated python even, even ones that are kept to a reasonable size, but they're a semi-arboreal, or some people would say arboreal snake. So they're gonna be found up in the trees, which is why they need to be slender bodied. Now they're gonna eat big prey items, not super big, but pretty big, so they can take down rabbits at an adult size. These are really cool snakes. They have really big teeth, really cool heads. They're not the easiest things to calm down, but I think if we were to constantly breed them and have more generations that are bred in captivity, it'd be a lot easier to tame them down for the most part. So I think they're really cool. I wanted to mention them, let's move on. Number five, we're gonna ruin the list with an amphibian, axolotls. When I first got into making YouTube videos in 2019, it seemed like axolotls were more commonly talked about and then Minecraft came out and they became super popular. I think that has really died down, that craze, and I see them basically nowhere. I don't see them in fish stores, I don't see them in pet stores, don't really see them in reptile stores. There's one or two booths at an expo maybe who has them. And even so, like the place that I got them from, that business no longer is in business. So I think that they're just, 
not as popular as they once were, there is good reason and bad reason. The thing that's most interesting about axolotls to me is that they are more or less extinct in the wild. They come from one tiny little range in Mexico, two lakes. One is dried up, the other one will be maybe before I'm done filming this video. I'm being serious. If you're watching this and you're a generally healthy person under the age of 75, you are gonna outlive axolotls in the wild, period. They're gonna be gone soon. Now this is sad, but also there's some that glow in the dark and they can regenerate their limbs. Like they're pretty cool little salamanders that are totally aquatic, but they like it really cool. I mean, if you get it 72 degrees in the water for a prolonged time, they're gonna pass away. They need it really, really cool, and that's difficult for most people to do. Now, mine are kept in a basement in a part of the house that is not heated. So they get down to you know 58, 57 degrees in the winter time and then up to about 70 in the summer. Now, of course, when I say 57, that's for not for prolonged periods of time and we do have a heater if needed. The point is they're always kept at the right temperature, but I need to keep them in a part of the house that no one really goes to because it's in a hallway that's not heated. So it's just not really the best pet for most people. Although they are really cool to look at. Number four. And suddenly we're down to four. We talked about them before, Fiji banner iguanas. The reason you don't see them a lot is because most creators are in the US. The US has 10 times the population of Canada, has a bigger population than most of Europe combined, basically. Well, not most of Europe, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Huge population. That's where most of the creators are from and they can't keep Fiji banded iguanas because they're illegal in the US. So you're gonna see guys like myself and Mike Titula, those are really the only sizable uh, YouTube channels that I know of that really talk about them. And the reason that I talk about them so much is because I think they're amazing. I wanna shed more light on them. My friends in the US can't legally do that with them in their own collection. But I have Frankie, he's amazing. The most cool lizard in my opinion, that has ever existed, ever. I can't say enough good things about Fiji banded iguanas. They're herbivores, they stay small, they're not aggressive, they bite you, it doesn't really hurt that bad, they're not gonna tail whip you, they don't need a big enclosure like a green iguana would. They're just amazing. They're, they're the perfect iguana, it just really sucks that the US can't have them. This time, I know I rub it in all the time, I'm not. I really feel for you, because I'll tell you what, my favorite lizard, Diamond, cover your ears, is Frankie to look at for sure. Number three tree monitors, specifically blues and greens. Now there is one sizable YouTube channel for sure that I know shows them all the time, and that's Dion at Reptiliatus. That's part of his staples. Now I know that uh, Emily and Ed at Snake Discovery also have green tree monitors, or maybe it's a blue, I can't even remember, I was there and I saw it. But either way, they don't really show it that much because they have so much other content, right? So Dion really does show it a lot, but the reason I think is because they do need quite a bit of space, they're not that easy to find, and they're pretty expensive. We're talking two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000, depending on if it's blue, green, if it's imported, which means wild caught, or if it's captive bred. I would love to keep them, I think they're amazing, but honestly, if I'm gonna keep expensive lizards, personally, I like Fiji bandits more. I've thought about making maybe a breeding project and, and getting more Fiji bandits, but I don't think I wanna go into green tree monitors just because they're cool, they're amazing, but I can go and see Dion anytime. He's a, you know, a friend of mine and go see his. They're amazing. They're, you know, they're they're gonna eat insects and, and pinky mice and, and full-size mice once they get old enough and they're super smart. They can figure out puzzles to eat basically. They're amazing and they can have really cool enclosures. But I mean, they're just really not for me. And I think they're not for a lot of people, but of course they're one of the most rewarding lizards if that's what tickles your fancy. Number two, ah, throw in another amphibian. Cruzio hyla or fringed leaf frogs. These are probably the most beautiful tree frog in the world. I can't think of anything else as beautiful. I personally think waxy monkeys are pretty cool looking too and they're up there. But in terms of just beauty, spectacular to look at, you look at in awe, you walk past an enclosure, you're like, what the heck is that? Cruzio hyla are kind of at the top of the heap. Now there's two different species, Craspidopus and then Sylviae. I found a Sylviae in the wild in Costa Rica with some of my friends, Dion and Mike Titula, who both actually own Cruzio hyla Craspidopus, thanks to the footage, boys. Uh, but the problem is they're fragile, right? They're very fragile, they're prone to prolapse, they're prone to an, uh, skin infection, fungal infection. They're just not the easiest thing to keep. I think that they're amazing, they're cool. The reason I don't keep them is just because they're really fragile and take a lot of time. And in terms of frogs, I have Amazon milk frogs, which I think that are almost as beautiful. They're easier and it just makes more sense for me. Number one, 
this is gonna change dune geckos or elegant sandfinger geckos or there's a bunch of names. Uh, Stenodactylus, there's a few, but Stenodactylus, Stenodactylus and Stenodactylus petrii or petri, I can't remember exactly how you pronounce it, I'll put it on the screen. Either way, these are amazing. My friends, again, Diner Reptiliatus and the guy who showed them to me, Daffy's Reptiles. Fadi at Daffy's Reptiles is the freaking man. He has a great setup for them. They're really easy. He opened my eyes to them. And I think they're gonna get more popular. They're not expensive right now. They're pretty simple to breed. You can keep them in captivity amongst each other so you can cohab them easily. And also the males can be cohab too. Now, of course, do your research on how to do it. Don't just go throwing in a bunch of Stenodactylus and hoping for the best, right? But they can be kept on sand. They're insectivores. They're like three or three and a half inches long. They're super tiny. They're personable. You can handle them. Their eyes are cool looking. Their feet are cool looking. Their tails are cool. Everything about them is very cool. I think they are so freaking cool. But I think that most people don't know about them. Um, Captive breeding is something that we're really working on, but is not huge. So a lot of them are imported. And I think in general, most of the time you don't get an imported animal if you can help it. So I think that they're gonna bump up in popularity. But anyway, those are the seven dirty reptiles you can't see on TV. Let me know, is this a stupid idea? Let me know in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, anyway, thanks George Carlin, RIP for uh, the inspiration for basically a lot of the stuff I do, but for this list especially, thanks for hitting like and subscribe. Appreciate you, you're the freaking best, amazing. Thanks so much for the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, discounts on merch, you guys get one-on-ones, you guys know about travel before it happens, all that and more for as little as a dollar a month. And that's it. I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, so that means I'll see you in the next one.